What's going on there, guys? We're back with another one. And today we got to talk about Shannon Sharp and his new deal with ESPN. Now, it hasn't become public knowledge just how much Shannon Sharp is going to get, but it has been announced that his role with First Take will be expanded and maybe even new programming, especially centered around the NFL season. So they're really pleased with the early returns on Shannon Sharp since leaving Undisputed after his dispute with Skip Bayless and the network. You know, Stephen A. recruited him, brought him in. And ironically, you know, Skip did the same thing for Stephen A. when he was unemployed at the time. But, um, you know, Shannon has come in and they've had, you know, the biggest, biggest uh, viewership that they've had over there, you know, adding Shannon Sharp. And so they're looking to extend his role with the network completely. And it says extend his role with first take so now looking at that people are wondering is it more days is he being groomed for something else and Stephen A. Smith has hinted at potentially leaving first take if he's not the highest paid employee that they have he said this on several occasions over the last year he's been on podcasts really talking about it and saying you know he loves it there he loves working for his bosses that, that he's under but he said, you know, he needs something at this point in his career to show that, okay, we've been number one this long and I'm, I've am i been number one. I'm the common denominator and I, or I'm the person that's always been there. A lot of moving parts, but you had to have Stephen A at first take, you know, to see these type of returns. And Stephen A has gone and started his own studio, put his own money forward, and now he's doing his own thing when he's off the clock at ESPN. You know, the few moments that he gets when he's not calling games or doing first take and other stuff like that. And so now many are thinking if Stephen A were to exit, Shannon Sharp would step into that role uh, for first take. So Stephen A is looking for some money in the ballpark of $20 million annually um, you know, to to stay with the network. If not, he talked about going into late night television. He's filled in for Jimmy Kimmel before, but he's talked about like going into that type of thing, going to politics or something like that. Uh, now we've seen Stephen A. Um, I don't, don't want to say the wrong soap opera. Was it Younger the Restless or Younger the Restless or General Hospital? He he was on one of those things, so he's been. Um, dibbling and dabbling in a few other things, but he did say, um, you know, that, that he wants to go into that late night television. That's been his thing that he's really wanting to cross over into. Now, we're going to listen to Stephen A. Smith and what he said um, about his next contract. Let's check it out. It's coming to ESPN. <clears throat> And there's a lot of people that had a lot of questions about that. They heard the number being offered, reported by the New York Post and various other publications, five years, around $85 million. Of course, ESPN, as is its typical position, declined to comment on the figures in the deal, of course. Um, the Pat McAfee Show will be on ESPN's cable channel, on ESPN's free YouTube channel, and on its direct-to-consumer streaming service, ESPN+. Plus. Um, the deal replaces the fan dual sponsorship deal that Pat McAfee had, which was reportedly for four years and $120 million. FanDuel has not addressed the McAfee situation. Uh, nor did they explain its view on how their deal with Pat McAfee dissolved. The deal reportedly averages about 17 million a year. According to the New York Post, ESPN will receive 230 fully produced shows a year that it can sell advertising against. Um, and the one other point that the article made in the New York Post it doesn't say who wrote it here, but in all likelihood, um, it was uh, written by Andrew Marchand, who's usually on top of these matters. It says the athletes are now putting on the sports shows evident with the McAfee agreement, similar to Peyton Manning's Omaha Productions. 
Peyton Manning does his Monday night football cast with his brother Eli, but he is also the lead producer on the, on on Peyton's Places on the Peyton Pay, Peyton Places series, among other things. First of all, props to Peyton Manning. My show, the NBA is Stephen A in Stephen A's world, is produced by my production company, Mr. SAS Productions, in concert with Omaha Productions, who obviously has a deal with ESPN. Um, and, and Peyton Manning was on my show uh, last night. I love working with the Mannings. I love them as people. I love them as professionals. They're just phenomenal. Um, and I got a lot of love and respect for them. So let me throw that out there. That's number one. Number two, <clears throat> Pat McAfee. The reason why people were clamoring for me to, ch to chime in about him is because you have so many people that are looking at what he's getting paid. It's no secret that even though you don't know the numbers that I make, even though I'm sure a lot of you think, you know, it's clearly more than I'm making. Stephen A, what do you have to say about that? Two things. Number one, I don't give a damn. He negotiated his deal a few weeks ago. I negotiated my deal a few years ago. Climate is different. Market is different. Different things are happening. The situation is not the same. That's only one of the reasons it's not the same. Now, I know there are those of you that will sit up there and say, that's BS. Disney announced months, months ago, it's laying off 7,000 people. It's trying to make up for $5.5 billion in losses because of the pandemic where parks were closed and movie theaters were closed and revenue was compromised and stuff like that. And anybody under the Disney umbrella has to pay a price. Uh, how could they go and they can make a deal like this? How many times have I told y'all I'm a big boy? I've been to hell and back. This does not phase me at all. A few moments later. Is it important to you based on the way the first time ended at ESPN that you are the highest paid person on ESPN given the work that you're doing for them? Do you think that should be the case? Yes. I'm not stuttering. Hell yes. That's absolutely true. In the world of sports television, Hey, Travis, I've been number one for 12 years. Come April 1st, we're yep. 12 consecutive years, I've been number one. Not only have I been number one every year, I've been number one every week and every month of every year for the last 12 years. Whether it's Pat McAfee, it's Mike Greenberg, it's Scott Van Pelt, it's Troy Aikman, it's Joe Buck, it's Kirk Herb Street. the list goes on and on. I'm so honored to have the colleagues that I have that I work with at ESPN every day. I look at other people in the business. I got a bunch of friends at FS1. You know what? Michael Irvin's there, Keyshawn Skip, uh, Richard Sherman, Rob Parker, Chris Boussard. The list goes on and on. Even LaShawn McCoy and Emmanuel Acho and, and Joy Taylor with her fabulous self. The list goes on and on and on. But let me tell you something. I'm the one that's been number one. And at the end of the day, it would be nice one day for this man to stand before everyone and be like, this is not, I'm number one, and this says I'm number one, but I'm not just a talent. I'm a business. My contract's up in 18 months. And I can tell you right now, I'm not planning on staying. I hope to stay. I want to stay, but make no mistake about it. I will never get over how they let me go. Never. And as far as I'm concerned, they means everybody. It's not about ESPN. It's about corporate America. We see cuts taking place all the time. Time. I built my own studio, okay? I came seven figures out of my own pocket and built it, okay? I got my own YouTube channel. I'm not playing around. I'm going to make sure and exhaust myself doing everything that I can to have something to offer. That way, if they don't want it, somebody else will. And it absolutely positively breeds from what transpired to me in 2009. That will never, ever happen to an unprepared Stephen A. Smith. I'm always going to be prepared to be gone. So again, man, Stephen A. Smith made it abundantly clear what he's looking for uh, with his partnership with ESPN. He, he's viewing it more like, okay, I'm an employee, but I want to be treated more like a partner at this point. And you look at all the hats Stephen A. Smith has worn for the network, NBA Countdown. He appears on every show that they've had. You know, he, he's on Get Up sometimes. He, he's on Sports Center. He does 
post game commentary for the network at times, and he's also carried like you know the the draw to the network first take every day. Think about that. They fill that time slot for so many years and has kept the interest up. No matter what revitalizations they've made to the show or you know who they've brought in, Stephen A has been able to coexist with those personalities in a positive light for the audience. You know, I know a lot of people are talking about uh, him and Shannon and their views on the Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese thing. And, but the re- the fact of the matter is you can't just take someone like that out of that position. And I don't think you put Shannon there as the permanent host, um, just cause it has a format right now. Right. And, their chem is working with them. The numbers is working with them. It'll be noticeable if Stephen A. Smith is gone, you know. Um, and, and also, I would anticipate Stephen A. Smith would not want to wear all of those hats. I don't want to do all that sideline reporting. Oh, well, if I'm going to do that, my salary has to reflect that. He's wanting to be the highest paid employee, and he wants something north of $20 million annually. Um, you one would have to imagine Shannon Sharp got something around there because you look at Nightcap, you look at Club Shay Shay, they had to make it worth his while and if they're going to work him more and bring him more into the network to take more time away from something that he owns I can only imagine what he's making you know, for it to make business sense, like if it's just slightly more than what he would have been making doing his own thing I don't think he takes that um, and maybe it's something on the back end as well. So Shannon Sharp, you know, he's happy. He, he signed his one year deal just to see if he liked it. You see, he came in this thing, in this deal as a boss. Well, I, I don't know if it was a one year deal. Don't get me the line. Either they renegotiated very fast or, and his deal was coming up maybe one year, one and a half, two years. What, who knows? Right. But he came into it. You kind of see, like, he would have been fine just going back and doing Club Shay Shay and Nightcap. So they had to make it worth his while. Now Stephen A. Smith has built his audience here on YouTube. And he's going back like, hey, you know, I'm building my own thing. You got to show me that you really value who I've been for the network for so many years. They were struggling with original programming. Uh, for a while, you know, and that's why they went and acquired Pat McAfee and his content. You know, well, I ain't acquire it, but they got the streaming rights to be able to stream it, you know, simultaneous with YouTube just to bring in that audience, you know, that television audience. And that's how everybody's kind of looking at it now. Um, everybody, if, if you're smart, right, at this point, you have your own platform independent of these major networks because, if they let you go, you get fired, whatever, uh, cut cutbacks or whatever, then you have something to still have your voice, you know, heard and you're able to speak about it on your own. But you don't want to be in a position where you don't have your own. Uh, it would have been nice for someone like Max Kellerman to have had his own uh, podcast or something. But some people in their contract, see, this is where you got to watch going forward. They, they make you sign a non-compete. And you're not able to even do anything on your own. You don't sign over your flexibility or, you know, things that your creativity to them solely. You know, that that is just not uh, feasible for anyone because now they have all the control. What you do in your contract is you sign up to do a job specific and you read those little bitty words at the bottom of your contract. And your lawyer should do that. And if you sign knowing that, then, okay, yeah, you messed up. But, um, you know, I, I like the way these guys are putting pressure on the network and they now have a voice and they have, um, you know, some some things that, okay, it's like, would I take a little bit less money doing my own thing? Or, you know, am I going to push your thing day and night not be flexible with the time clock. See, I think that's what Stephen A. Smith is saying now, just the flexibility of going live when he deems this time to go live in his free time. That feels good. That, that's a feeling that 
you know, you're going to have to throw me a lot of money for me to work my hours around your 24 opposed to me working around things that I have to do in my 24. So, yeah, man. Uh, Shannon Sharp may be replacing Stephen A. Smith, though, in that role. That's what the reports are saying. But I, I want to know what you guys think about this in the comment section, man. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Till next time. Peace.